This is my town. I love Melbourne. Well, as a person, uh, you know, I first met Lois when he was just coming out of West Virginia. Um, I was assistant coach and player and uh, came back and was assistant coach with the New Jersey Nets and he had an opportunity to come up and play a little bit. Those, first of all, Lowe's was the only player that I knew that had made it to the NBA and he was from Mount Vernon. I mean, just hearing everything from him, I remember at a young age, you know, he would take me in his office sometime and we would just talk about the game and I would just try and just soak everything up that he would say. When I see five kids doing something positive, there's only one negative doing it. And I, I believe today, as we support the positiveness, we, we share with those young people that small percentage. And, and that's what I see when I see my birth. You know, I don't, I don't see that one percent. There's only one place. I've been everywhere, and I find myself back here in my Vernon. If your mom were to describe you today, who would she say Lois Moore is? Well, you know, I, I think the hallmark of whether your parents like you or not, or appreciate you is when they speak about you all the time, you know? And when I see my mom and I see around people, whether she's at the church or she's bowling uh, or out in the street, you know, she's always talking, you know, about her kids, not, you know, not just me personally, but, uh, and she's, she's very proud um, that she was able to raise four kids and uh, that stayed out of trouble. And, and uh, listen to, or she was able to lay a foundation for her kids that the kids actually practice. Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, any of us were perfect, but um, we were able to avoid some of the pitfalls. And so my mom is very proud of that. And, uh, you know, when I go over, she helps out at the church, you know, uh, she does a lot of cooking and baking. And when I go to the church, she, she never neglects the fact to tell everybody, that's my son. Do you have to take out the trash when you come by the house? Um, I will do whatever my mother asked me to do. <laughs> okay. Well, there was a lot of pressure, uh, you know, growing up in, you know, in the projects and um, you were around 10, 11 or 12, um, you know, my mom and dad was uh, going through some, some, some very serious things and, um, you know, with some domestic violence issues there. And, and my mom, you know, outside of the building said to me one day that, uh, that, my, mom, that, that w my mom and dad, they were gonna get a divorce. And she said to me, um, you know, I know you're only like 12 years old, but I need you to be the man of the house. Wow. And she said that, remember, whatever you do, say, whatever movements you make, your brothers and your sister's gonna follow. And for a 12 year old, I really didn't understand. But, um, you know, as I thought about it, I started to think about all the things I would say that, or how I would act that my brothers and my sisters would follow. It sounds like you're a very wise fellow. Uh, and, it, and it strikes me that I was quickly uh, ready to jump on assimilating what I felt and what someone else may be feeling. But with your tenure here and, and the experience that's invaluable, immediately you, it sounds like you say you pump the brakes first and try oh, yeah. to assess that situation instead of reacting. You've got to do a lot more assessment. So how do you get the time? Where do you get the patience to deal with those situations and be the director? Well, I think that, you know, uh, you know, some people, when I, when I was growing up, people said, oh, he's a good athlete, or, or be labeled as a dumb jock. But uh, uh, through Mr. Jones at, at the Boys and Girls Club, uh, when I first started to play basketball. Would that be James Jones? James Jones. And he would relate uh, our basketball experience to life. And he would say, you know, making a turnover in a game, you know, could cost you the game but making a turnover in life could cost you your life. Wow. So when, when you start to be able to transfer or transfer skills, um, and, and so when I, I look at everything, I kind of look at it from a basketball perspective and, and try to relate some things that I've learned on in terms of winning, because we take sports very seriously. You know, I, I took, you know, 
when I lost a game, man, I, I cried every game that I lost. And that wasn't many, you know, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't stomach losing, you know. And, and when I got to college, uh, you know, the, them guys said, man, you may do a lot of losing here. I don't know if you have enough tears for this, you know, so <laughs> right, <laughs> you need right. to make some, you need to make some adjustments. So, you know, I learned from, uh, from, from sports, you know, kind of how, you know, that in order to be really good or to be great, it takes hard work. Uh, it, it takes, um, you know, persevering. It takes, it's going to be some ups and downs in, in that experience from the coach, you know, to your teammates, uh, to the game itself. To, to go into, uh, you know, somebody else, the enemy's gym and what they say about you and, and then being able to go home and have people love you in, in your gym and, and start to relate that, that kind of life experience that, you know, something I experienced on the court, you know, you know, try to put it into life. Well, I think that, um, you know, uh, in the interim of my experience in basketball um, at the boys club was, you know, the fundamentals. Everything was already very structured and strict. Wasn't about your athleticism. Wasn't about your, uh, you know, your speed, your quickness, your jumping ability. It was about, uh, you know, having good conduct, good sportsmanship, good character. It was about uh, understanding the fundamentals, understand that it is a team game, it is not an individual game. And so we played, the, we played the game on the floor and we played the game with our minds. And, and so, but, you know, as a kid, but, but when I got to high school and I had, I had all these fundamentals and all these different things, uh, then, then the game at the high school level became more quicker, faster, people became more athletic and so you have to start using some of those physical gifts, you know, that a lot of people may have see, not, not seen as a, as a little kid. They could see you dribble, shoot, pass, but maybe not see you jump or use any of your speed. But now I'm getting in a more competitive situation. I'm at the next stage, and so you have to make adjustments. So that's when, you know, people started, I had to use more quickness, more jumping ability. And then when people started, I said, well, well, he can really get off the floor. Then you have to learn how to manage that. The fans got to see it on the court during game time. Did you have to work at it or was it all natural? Um, I, you know, I, I think Mr. Mr. Jones was like one of those unique characters, man. I mean, I, I mean, for us to grow taller, he used to hang us from the door, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, to jump higher, he used to, you know, he used to put this mark on the wall and he'd test our vertical and so you had to jump up and touch that, that tape. And, and, and he put something on your hand so you could see the mark. And then if we got it, then he'd move it up. And then he would just keep moving it up, keep moving it up until uh, you were able to reach that. So as I got to high school, um, you know, I didn't make the team as a ninth right? grader. I didn't know that. You know, and it wasn't many freshmen making their varsity teams. Um, but I remember coming back to the club and I remember um, you know, getting back on the team. And I remember, you know, going, I mean, working extremely hard. I remember giving up after that, after I got cut, I remember uh, getting up every morning in, in, in the projects at six o'clock in the morning and running to the high school. And, and then, um, you know, showering. That's a good five, six miles or more. Yeah, running there, showering, and getting ready for, you know, ready for classes. Because I had become so, uh, passionate about, you know, wanting to be successful on the court. Let's shift gears a little bit. That passion, uh, that discipline, uh, and the sacrifice that you made as a teenager, do you get a chance to talk to the youth here and tell them some of your story of that passion and sacrifice and discipline? And if you do, how do they receive it? Inside every, every uh, individual has a God-given gift. You know, and, and mine had to be, you know, was in the physical realm, which in turn I was able to use with basketball. And, and, and I said, once you find your niche, you know, once you find something worth dreaming about, I mean, you'll put aside, you know, all the nonsense, 